You were best to call them generally, man by man, according to the script. Here's the scroll of every man's name thought fit of, through all of Athens to play in our interlude for the Duke and the Duchess on their wedding day. At night! First, good Peter Quince, call forth the rest of the actors, and then go to a point. And then stay with the play. Oh, okay. Our play is the most lamentable comedy and the most corrupt of Pyramus and Thisbe. A very good piece of work, I assure you. And a merit. Now, good Peter Quince, call forth the rest of the actors. Master, spread yourself. <laughs> okay, answer as I call you. Nick Bottom the Weaver. Ready! Name one party and form. Proceed. You, Nick Bottom, are set down form. For Pyramus! Obviously. Francis Luke the What? Is Pyramus a lover or a tyrant? A lover! Who kills himself most gallant for love? That will last some tears in the true performing of it. If I do it, let the audience look to their eyes. I will be restored! I will condone in some measure. Yet my chief humor is that of a tyrant. I can play Eric's rarely the parts of Terra Captain to make all split. Francis. The raging rocks! And shivering shocks shall break the locks of prison's gates. Francis. And Dimmis Cove shall shine for far and make and mark the foolish fates. <laughs> this was lofty. Now, good Peter Quince, call forth the rest of the audience. Francis. That was a tyrant's name. Everything's name. Uh, a love of more controlling. Francis, Luke, the fellow's mender. Here, Peter Prince. Luke, you must take this beyond you. What is this be? A wandering knight? It is the lady that feared this mouse alone. <laughs> Nay, they do not wear when my beard is coming. That is all one. You can wear a mask and you may speak as small as you will. And I wear my own mask, too. I will speak in a march in a voice. This need, this need. Oh, Pyramus, my love, dear, my lady. <coughs> no, no, you must. Adieu. 